I think there's going to be a serious shakeup with the Celtics. I truly believe tonight is Kyrie's last game of the Celtics. You know, you never know with LeBron. And I, I, I have to tell you right now, I think he's incredibly unhappy in L.A. They just missed out on Tyron Lou. They tried to lowball Lou. They're not getting him. They lost out on Monty Williams to the low Phoenix Suns, who haven't even been a com- competitor in at least 10 years now. But we saw how players are starting to say, I'm just not going to play here. You can sit me all year. We saw it with Le'Veon. We saw it with Kyrie. I think LeBron's going to do that, though. I think if you're going to work out a trade for him, the Lakers could send him to somewhere like Sacramento I, because he doesn't have the no-trade clause. Hold on, hold on. No, I, mi- I missed that. Pa- hold on a second. I missed that part of the deal. You're saying LeBron James does not have his famous no-trade clause? No, he does not have his no-trade clause. How did I miss that? Wow. I missed it as well, so I just assumed he had it. Um, Wow. The Unhappy Hour on the new AmericanMedia.com. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way Galaxy, this is Brian Engelman. This is The Unhappy Hour, and we have Zach Barris on the phone. Zach, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm living the dream, man. I'm... I'm excited because you seemed excited. You're like, let's do a show. I got stuff to talk about. And that's usually good stuff. Usually good stuff. Uh, NBA related. It, and if you're in the chat room, by the way, please go ahead and type your comments in. We'll try to bring your questions into today's program. Uh, where do you want to start, Zach? There's so much going on with the let's, playoffs. Let, let's start with the current NBA playoff team, the Boston Celtics. Okay. Celtics. Um, you know, they're on the verge. The Celtics are on the verge of being eliminated tonight um, in what's likely Kyrie's last game as a Celtic. Um, you know, I, I truly believe tonight is Kyrie's last game as a Celtic. And by the way, the, the Bucks have just gotten like five offensive rebounds on the same possession. Make that sick. <laughs> in the same possession now. Yeah, it's, um, it's weird, man. Like, the Celtics were almost better without Kyrie. I don't know how that happens. but They it, were better with Isaiah Thomas, but it wasn't... It wasn't long-term sustainability with Isaiah, obviously, with the hip injury. And they realized they were limited against Cleveland. They needed – I'm not going to sit here and knock the trade. Boston Boston got the better into the trade. Cleveland was much worse off without Kyrie. It, yeah. just is what it, it just is what it is. That's true. However, though, you know, I think there's going to be a serious shakeup with the Celtics. We've watched Danny Ainge. He's not afraid to do it. He's not afraid to take his team and try to get it to the next level. They've got four first-round picks this year. Look to them to try to swing the deal for Anthony Davis, although I doubt that Griff is going to be up for trading him if Davis is willing to stay long-term now. Um, you know, if Kyrie walks in free agency, look for them to move Gordon Hayward to get rid of his contract, and they're going to try to go after, you know, if Kyrie leaves, they could even try to go after a Clay Thompson type player. I don't think they will because I don't think he fits into their current scheme. Okay. But... Look for them to get desperate. Look for them to go on any route and try to do whatever they can. You know, they could even try to go after Kemba Walker in free agency. Um, it all depends what Boston's able to do to get rid of Gordon Hayward's contract and how desperate they are. Or try to swing a trade, um, you know, for Kemba Walker in a signing trade type deal where they can give up a first round pick. Um, you know, I think right now, um, you know, Boston is. You know, I think Boston's just a total mess right now. So, um, you know, it create, it's very problematic right now, the roster. You know, Orford's aging. Kyrie's likely gone. Gordon Hayward just hasn't been very good. And, you know, Tatum and Brown need to be the focal point. And what do you do with Terry Rozier, too? Do you, do, you lose, do you lose Rozier in free agency or do you try to re-sign him? He's been unhappy as well because he's had very limited playing time. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's so weird because you looked at the Cleveland Cavaliers four years ago, five years ago now. Jeez, has it been that long? Um, when LeBron came back, and you're like, this is a dynasty. This is a dynasty in the making. And you just go, we are set for so many years in a row. You know, we had our run they and were then... Set for four year, they were set for four years in a row. But, I mean, again, I think people at the time were encouraged that LeBron was going to stay the rest of his career, yeah. being one of them, I thought, at the time. Um, True. You know, I, I didn't think that after 15. I thought 15 was a disaster with the injuries. And I thought most of 15, I was like, you know, I don't see him more than two years. And then all of a sudden it was, they wanted 16. I was like, okay, now I see him here for one. And then it was, you know, you never know with LeBron. And I, I, I have to tell you right now, I think he's incredibly unhappy in L.A. They just missed out on Tyron Lue. They tried to lowball Lue. They're not getting him. 
They lost it on Monty Williams to the low Phoenix Suns, who haven't even been a com- competitor in at least 10 years now. I think LeBron's unhappy, you know, too. What are the chances Kyrie and LeBron think, end up back in Cleveland? I, one, I don't think that's likely at all. I think it's more likely LeBron comes back to Cleveland than Kyrie. Um, you know, and I, I don't know if the Cavaliers want LeBron back in Cleveland right now. I think they're trying to retool their roster. Yeah. Um, you know, and it depends. I, if, you know, I don't think the Cavaliers have the assets to give up to get LeBron. I mean, it, it would cost them... I, I just don't think they have the assets. If they land the number one pick, yeah, they do. They're not going to give up Zion for a 34-year-old LeBron, no, 35-year-old LeBron. They're not doing that. Um, you know, LeBron's going to be 35 next December. They're not trading that number one overall pick if they get it for LeBron. I'll be very clear with you right now that they're not going to do that. No, no I agree with um, you on that, but, but we saw how players are starting to say, I'm just not going to play here. You can sit me all year. We saw it with Le'Veon. We saw it with Kyrie. I don't think LeBron's going to do that, though. Um, I just don't think he's going to do that. I think if you're going to work out a trade for him, the Lakers could send him to somewhere like Sacramento I, because he doesn't have the no-trade clause. Hold on, hold on. No, I, mi- I missed that. Pa- hold on a second. I missed that part of the deal. You're saying LeBron James does not have his famous no trade clause? No, he does not have his no trade. clause. How did I miss that? Wow. I missed it as well. So I just assumed he had it. Um, wow. I just assumed he had one. I, from what I am made aware of today, that he does not have a no trade clause. So you can sit there and you can trade him wherever you want. You can trade him to the Boston Celtics if you want. You know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't. I think there are very few teams who have the assets to pull it off in a deal that would give LA what they want. I think LA has been very stubborn. I think they're being run very poorly. I mean, you look at they are the new Cleveland Browns of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Brian, how badly can you screw up the draft? You know, when you have the second overall pick three years in a row. Yeah. You know. And, you know, I mean, you blew, you blew the D'Angelo Russell pick. You traded him. Um, what's his name? Uh, Brandon Ingram just hasn't been very good. Now Brandon Ingram has no trade value because the guy's got a blood clot in his heart. Same, same issue Chris Bosh had. Chris Bosh, yeah. Um, which ultimately ended Bosh's career. Um, you know, Julius Randle's no longer on the roster. Lonzo Ball hasn't been healthy. He's had the fallout. And Lonzo Ball also hasn't been very good. Um, where you know Kyle Kuzma when he had max trade value you didn't trade him Josh Hart when he had max value you didn't trade him the Lakers are an absolute mess run by Magic Johnson who's now gone Rob Palenka they missed out on David Griffin they missed out on Bob Myers I just if you're the Lakers I don't know where you go from here I think Jeannie Boss is in overhead um, and it, I think it's just starting to show I think the Lakers are just a complete train wreck right now. And, and, and I don't think this whole thing was caused by, by LeBron. I think what happened is this is what the Lakers' plan was. This was their ultimate plan, and I was right from the start. Can I guess, the can I, can I, can I guess on it? Can I guess? Yeah. Okay. Um, if, we're, if we're thinking back, they expected to get another free agent to pair with LeBron. I think it was uh, probably Paul George. Was the plan it to get there that. or Kawhi? It right? wasn't even that. Oh, the plan A was going out and getting a top tier free agent, but that wasn't. They weren't even banking on that. It was what happens was they were preparing for life after LeBron. They said we don't want to do what happened to LeBron in Cleveland the first time. What happened to LeBron when you know in Miami? What happened to Miami when LeBron left? And what happened to Cleveland when LeBron left a second time? We don't want that to happen. Right. Here's what we're going to do: is we're going to bring along LeBron to a team with a bunch of young stars who are going to develop, and LeBron's going to sit there and he's going to fade into the sunset down Sunset Boulevard. You know, and he's going to keep heading east until he gets past Dodger Stadium. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you know, you can take Sunset all the way to Dodger Stadium for the most part. Um, you know, and that's the thing. is you, you ride LeBron off into the sunset, and, well, actually, you'd be going west. Sunset's at the west. But so what I'm saying is, though, you know, what they were trying to do is drive LeBron out, you know, let him end his career down peacefully while these young and upcoming stars like Kuzma, Alonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram take over the reins from LeBron, and that's what they were ultimately trying to do. While acquiring another second young superstar eventually in free agency, like a Kyrie Irving, like an Anthony Davis, to pair with LeBron, 
who they figured would still be in his prime three to four years into that deal, and then they wouldn't need him in three to four years. That's what they were hoping for, that all these guys would progress. Instead, what they did was they regressed. They don't have a lot of young talent. I mean, it's amazing. You know, I always said for years that LeBron could take any team in the league to the playoffs. We've witnessed that in the past. Look at last year's Kevin. took last year's team to the finals that this year won 20 games, 19 games. Um, you know, granted, the Cavaliers were beat up, and they probably would have won 31 games if they were healthy. Yeah, um, yeah, Tristan you know, and Kevin Love, and, you know, there were a lot of reasons yeah. why. But, sure, I get they your point. They would have won 30-something games had they been completely healthy all season. Yeah. Because you watched the time this year, and they weren't even bad. Um, there, there were nights where you're like, this team is not that bad when they're healthy. Um, it was a blessing in disguise that they sucked as bad as they did. Um, you know, because now you don't lose the pick to the Hawks. But looking at it, I think the Lakers are just a complete not, an, an utter mess. You've got nobody that wants to coach them. They're going to be lucky to bring the third best team, the third best coach if possible, into the into the equation. Um, number one. But isn't LeBron the coach? Isn't that what we always hear? Is that LeBron's the coach of his teams? Yeah, but it's not necessarily true. That's fair. And he's the GM, but that's not necessarily true either. It's just the knock that he gets. So, um... But, well, no, I, 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 want, I, I want to get to, I, I want to get to a, a couple things here. Magic leaving. When he was, when LeBron just did his, uh, you know, his television show in the barbershop, you know, he, he seemed pretty pissed off about it. Like, since it's played out and we've had some time... Do we have any more idea of why Magic left and how LeBron, like, you know, I'm getting comments here in the chat room from Chad. He's saying LeBron needs to get out of L.A. After seeing Magic quit, I feel like the organization is a mess. Most people bash Dan Gilbert, but he's willing to spend the money. What, what kind of perspective can you give us on Magic leaving and, and if, how betrayed does LeBron feel? Because that's the guy that, that, that's, that made the pitch. He, he's the salesman. That's part of the reason why LeBron showed up. I mean, up. if I were LeBron, I'd be living right now. I mean... They were going out there. You know, LeBron wanted to end his career by bringing back the Lakers to glory. It's the exact opposite right now. They missed the playoffs. Right. I mean, that's what we're talking about right now. The, the organization is a complete mess. Not one suit. I mean, they, there should have been red flags for LeBron going there first. Place. I think LeBron thought that he could change the narrative in L.A. by going there and saying, listen, they haven't scored a free agent since Dwight Howard left. Oh, boy. Um, you know, since they, you know, they, they haven't. They haven't they haven't brought in one prolific free agent in years since I lived out there, and I haven't lived out there for five and a half years now. God, has it um, been that long, you know, Zach? You've been gone for five moved, and a half. I moved in. I moved in July thirteenth, Brian. Wow. End of July. All right. Early August thirteenth. Um, I've been back here almost six years now, and I looked at it and I said to myself, "I go, okay, they failed on every major free agent, whether it was Lamarcus Aldridge, Dwight Howard. I mean, it's been one after another with them." And they haven't been able to do anything. Um, their loyalty to Kobe ultimately affected them for a while. You know, which I'm not going to go and sit there and rip on because the guy won five championships there. Yeah, you give him the Lifetime Achievement so, Award, and that's kind of what you want out of your organization, except it doesn't make good business sense. You're like, oh, well, the players no, will play harder fun. for him. But will at they? the same time, he, you know, a player pledged loyalty to the organization, decide to sign their long term especially after the tumultuous years where he demanded a trade to Phoenix and Chicago at one point. Um, but ultimately, Kobe is a Laker for life. True. Very few people do that. So, you know, it was not a good basketball decision, but from a legacy standpoint, in 20 years, people always remember Kobe ending his career playing there with the Lakers and not having to see him in a Washington Wizards uniform. Exactly. Um, you, know, you know, it still looks weird to me seeing Jordan in that because it wasn't real Michael Jordan. Um, and it would have been the same thing if Kobe ended his career with, uh, you know, the Philadelphia 76ers winning 12 games a year and him winding down his career in his hometown of Philly. Right. It would have been weird to see. I mean, I'll be the first one to say it. I agree. It's still weird to me to see LeBron in purple and gold. I hate um, LeBron in purple and gold. It's it's just awful. It's just awful. You know, I think the whole situation... Um, just with the Lakers is a complete mess right now. I just don't know where they go from here because they've botched it so many times. You, the two general manager candidates, the best on the market, you didn't even get close to getting. You didn't get close to landing once. Said you're stuck with Palenka. 
you lost magic in the process. You, you know, you, you didn't, you know, the time you took Lonzo Ball over De'Aaron Fox, who De'Aaron Fox looks like a superstar, and is going to ultimately turn around the Sacramento Kings. Um, I have a feeling you'll see the Kings in the playoffs next year. Um, Man, it's been a while since you, you know, could say got, that, huh? Yep, and they've got a good young team now, and they're led by De'Aaron Fox, who's a future star. I mean, imagine LeBron playing along De'Aaron Fox. It'd be, it'd be unbelievable if he could play along, but he doesn't. And instead he gets Lonzo Ball, you get a guy who can't shoot and isn't really a, an amazing defender either. Um, so the Lakers are just in a really poor spot right now. It kind of reminds me of this, this guy... You know, this, this should not be happening to the most historic franchise other than the Boston Celtics in the NBA. And technically, the Lakers might have one less championship. However, the, the, the Lakers, you know, it, it had five total seasons up until six years ago of missing the playoffs. Five total seasons. That's it. They missed the playoffs six years in a row now. They're That's back. stunning. That is just incredible you know, that it's tanked it, that way. And wow. I just don't know what the future of the Lakers, the Lakers hold. You know, it can be one of these scenarios. You know, I was having a conversation with someone the other day. We were talking about this at lunch, actually, yesterday. And, you know, this guy used to work for the Cavs. We were talking. And he goes, it's funny. He goes, my eight-year-old son is about to be nine. He goes, you know, he thinks the Golden State Warriors are the greatest team ever. You know, not the L.A. Lakers. He looked at the Lakers just like, huh? The Lakers used to be good? You know? <laughs> It's like kind of looking at that, and you're like, kidding yourself, like, wow, that's that's really what it well, is." Well, you know what um, it is. It's it's also like the Cleveland Browns. You know, were were like the epitome yeah, of football like in the '50s and about '60s. Before Browns, you know, it's all years. Oh man, the Browns used to be the best. You know, I'm like, okay, well, my dad, you know, 67 years old now, and my dad had moved here in '67. You know, and has never seen a winner. Um, you know, and you know, my dad's been here for 52 years. And the Browns have really never been good. They had a couple good years in the 80s, but no Super Bowls. Yeah, not um, even an and that's appearance. What I'm at. It's like right. that's, that's what people are going to talk about. You know, you just don't see it, and it's, it's unbelievable how bad the Lakers are. Um, you know, I don't see Kevin Durant going there in free agency. I don't see them landing a star. I have a feeling you're going to see if Klay Thompson does leave Golden State. I have a feeling he signs with the Clippers and goes with Kawhi to the Clippers. Um. I think you're going to see a lot of players prefer to play with the Clippers over the Lakers because of the dysfunction that's occurring within the Lakers organization. And any star that goes there, goes there is going to have to play second fiddle to the drama that goes on with an aging LeBron. I could see that. I could see that. I, I You know, let, let, me, let me get back to something real quick because we went past it too fast for me to make the comment. Danny Ainge and his health, with, with his mild, he had a heart attack the other day. It, it, with the Urban Meyer situation, Danny Ainge, you look at people in the front office, you know, the coaches, whatever, uh, what have you. D- do you think Danny Ainge is going to be in this for the long haul? Do you think it's serious or just, you know, wait and see? Did, did you hear any updates with him? I think him? Danny Ainge will be there for the long haul. If it was a minor heart attack, I think he'll be all right. Okay. And, and, and the, the Gordon Hayward contract, he's just what? He's just not the same player after the injury or he's not meshing with this coaching style, a blend of these? What, I think what? it's a little bit of both. I think it. I think, the, I think the Celtics last year, I think the injury is a blessing in disguise for the Celtics. You really look at why did they draft, why did they sign him anyway. You know, but I also don't think they were expecting Tatum to be as good as he was. Um, but you look how well Tatum and, you know, you look how well Tatum, Rozier, and Brown played last year. They got themselves into one game of the NBA Finals last year without Kyrie and without Hayward. And that is impressive. And you just expected with a healthier season, the expectations through the roof. You know, I don't, I don't think the, the the reality has met expectations at all with the Celtics. Not that, not that the Bucks are bad. I mean, the Bucks are a pretty darn good team. Um, I don't think people realize how good Milwaukee was this year. Um, I, I, I think that's an issue too. Is I, I think people really underestimated how good Milwaukee was. I'll count myself I among that group. Team that came within one game. Of making the NBA Finals last year was up three to two in a series, and you know had a two zero lead in the series last year and lost it. You know they were that close to making the NBA Finals last year. And by and by the way, if if you're watching it live, uh, the Bucks are ready to. They're what are they? They're up twenty two points with eight twenty three left. Um, Milwaukee up three. What's up? Did you see that 
Lance or Chili Elio? Oh no, I, I I bounced to the other room here to to knock the the show out. But they're up twenty five now. <laughs> Uh, man, it's it's gonna be so interesting. Now, now, are we gonna talk more? Do we want to bounce around to the other teams that are still in uh, playoff series, and then maybe talk some draft? Because I we've talked a lot about Celtics and a lot I'd about like the to Lakers. Talk to draft once the lottery comes out, because right now it's just all speculation. Where you know, guys are gonna like if the Cavs get the number three overall pick, if they get the number one, I just want to wait and see what it is with them. Okay, then then let's let's do that that way. Um, you know, I had this really, I, my heart kind of sunk. I, I had this moment where I had a feeling. I had the thought, what if what if they give LeBron the number one pick again? What if the Lakers somehow get Zion to play alongside LeBron? I just had that thought because, you know, it, some people thought that maybe we got the number one pick only because LeBron was coming back and, you know, the frozen envelope theory. I don't know how much credence you put to that. Are you confident that the, the lottery's on the up and up, or do you have your, your doubts? No, I think it's on the up and up. I really do. I don't know if it was back in the 80s, but I can tell you that it's not fixed now. Well, uh, who does it? Ernst & Young or something like that? One of like the... Yeah, it's not it's not a scam. I think it literally is a lottery. I think the Cavaliers have been incredibly fortunate, and let's hope they're incredibly fortunate one more time. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, okay, well then, then we'll push our lottery show back. I, I think uh, you know we'll know a little bit more. We can do our mock draft. We'll, we'll maybe give ourselves a little bit of time after the the ping pong balls land, and we'll kind of put together a really nice mock draft show. I think that'll be fun. When it, when is the NBA draft then? Uh, the lottery uh, is this sometime weekend. Sometime in late June. Okay. It's always after the finals. Yeah. All right. So we have, we have usually about a week after the finals. Okay. Um, well then, I don't know. You want to bounce around the league? You want to talk about the Sixers, the Warriors, the Rockets? Uh, what's on your mind? Who who are we thinking? Well, where are the big storylines uh, like here? I like the Warriors series. I mean, that's the most important one in the West right now because you're looking at is this the end of the Golden State Warriors? You know, obviously Demarcus Cousins will most likely be somewhere else next year. Um, I actually think it's less likely with the in- in- injury because I'm wondering who's going to give him that really large contract. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I do think he could wind up in the, in the Lakers uniform next year if they fail to land anyone again in free agency. I think you'll. I think there's a good chance he'll see Cousins the Lakers, and the Lakers will have to overpay for it because I don't see them getting Kyrie. I don't see them getting Kevin Durant, and I don't see them even getting Clay Thompson at this point. And you look at the relationship that Thompson has with the Warriors right now. Is that deteriorated enough to the point where Thompson might spurn them to go sign with the Lakers or the Clippers? Now, what 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 do you think's going on with Clay? You just think he's he just always feels like he's the fourth fiddle on the on the team. I think he is though. I don't think he's gotten enough touches. He's much better than. Look at what he did on a seventy three and nine basketball team. You know, I think people forget how good he was on that team as the second option offensively. He was really freaking good. I mean, didn't the guy put up like fifty points in almost like just over a half? Yeah. In like 28 minutes one time. I mean, I think people forget how good Clay Thompson was before Kevin Durant got there. Um, you know, and he's had to play fourth fiddle now, you know, third, fourth, even fifth fiddle sometimes. And, you know, he's really good enough. He's good enough to be the number two player on a championship team. He's proven that in 15 and 16. He's worth max money. If the Warriors aren't willing to give it to him, he can get it from anywhere else. Someone... He's still worth max money. He's good enough to be the number two option on a championship team. And, and somebody that, that wasn't mentioned among that list of super all-stars that you were discussing, wh- what about Kawhi? You think he stays in Toronto? Kawhi? No, I don't. Um, but here's the thing, though. If they win the title this year, I think it's open for discussion. I don't want to say he doesn't. Um, I, I tend to think he will go to the Clippers, but I could be wrong. I don't know if he's happy in Toronto. It, it's hard to gauge interest, you know, because they only have a year left of Kyle Lowry up there. And I don't think Kyle Lowry is incredibly happy with the organization. They're not going to sign him to a four-year deal. They're not sending a 34-year-old point guard that's aging to a large, large contract. You know, when they signed him, you know, two years ago, it was already, it was already an issue, you know, with the four-year contract. So I don't know what the deal is going to be with, uh, with him. 
And man, I saw the side by side. Kyle Lowry's been been putting on some weight, man. He's been getting a little. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I I really don't know what's going to happen and be the future of that team. You know, I I really couldn't tell you. Um, I, I think Toronto's the biggest enigma in the NBA because Lowry really pissed off. You know, he really pissed off a lot of guys when he made that trade for Demar. You know, when he traded Demar Derozan. But again, it was their only shot at a championship at this point, and I think they did take it or leave it. It's, you know, we could spend the next four years making the playoffs and going to the second or third round every year and never really being able to have a shot to win a championship. With Kawhi Leonard and giving him the opportunity to stay and, tr- and trading, you know, Jonas Valanciunas for Marcus Gasol, you put all your eggs in one basket, and God forbid they both leave at the end of the year, and Lowry leaves up next year, you start the rebuild. Well, my, my point, my point with the Celtics, and I, and I, I think I didn't finish uh, put the bow on my point earlier when I was talking about how the Celtics, you know, it, it seemed like the sky was the limit, and now it's like, oh man, we might be close to blowing this up, you know. And I said the Cavs, it felt like they're going to be a dynasty. They got their four year run, but you know, you have what? you have teams, you have franchises that seem bulletproof. You know, whether it's the Celtics, the, the thing, Cavs, though, the what, Warriors, though, the Lakers. Be- I think the Celtics will ultimately be competitive next year because here's the thing. Even if you do lose Kyrie, you still have Tatum, you still have Brown, you still have Warford, you have four first-round picks, a couple of them being lottery picks, you have the chance to trade for a star. So that's why I'm not overly concerned. God forbid you do lose Kyrie and Crazy and hypothetically, let's just ultimately say the Raptors do lose um, – that they do lose Kai, that they do lose Kawhi and Marcus Allen for agency. They can, the Celtics can always trade for a guy like Kyle Lowry. At that point, Toronto would be wanting to rebuild, so there will be someone available. Don't don't take the Celtics out of being, you know, super competitive next year because I don't see that happening with or without Kyrie. I mean, don't forget if Rozier's the starting point guard over there, I don't think they're losing too much. And honestly, I think he's a better team basketball player for what the Celtics need to ultimately do. Um, and, and so you went out then. So you're saying it wouldn't necessarily need to be a hardcore rebuild. It could just be a reload, a relaunch, a rebranding. Yeah, and I think that's what they're going to do. I don't think the Celtics are out of it, whether they lose Kyrie or not. You know, you have the ability to get Hayward's contract off the book. You know, it'll cost you a first-round pick, a mid-first-round pick to do that as well. Maybe even two of those first-round picks to get them off. Um, But you can get them out of there. And you can always trade the other ones and pick up you know, and pick up another star player. You have the ability to do that. Um, I, I, want, I want to get to a couple things here, a couple of comments. Uh, Rob is saying that Clay Thompson, he's a solid three. Without Curry and Green, he does not look that great. Now next to LeBron, he could really blossom. Uh, but he's also saying he can That's only catch and shoot. That kind of fit, that would play perfectly next to LeBron because he can shoot the three. Catch and, and shoot. And what does LeBron do? LeBron Picks plays out. great with uh, – look how good the Cavs over four years – they either led the league in threes or were second or third in the league in threes every single year in the four years with LeBron. Because you get you surround him with shooters and you get a, a lot of good looks. You know, and that's the thing that, that Magic it w- took a lot of criticism for was that they weren't building the Lakers around the LeBron style of basketball. Did we not call this last year? Yes. When we said that? I said that on the show. I said right I away we were talking about that. It didn't make sense then. It doesn't make sense now. And once again, Zach, you. <laughs> we were on top of it. You nailed it. I mean, that was one of the first things out of your mouth. It didn't make any sense. The plan never had a chance of, of making sense for you. Um, Back to the comments. Chad was asking about the Clippers landing any stars. I think we did talk about that. We could talk about it some more if you wanted. Uh, Jason was saying Magic has a lot of interest outside of the Lakers. Maybe he just felt it was time after LeBron fell through in his first year to go do something else. But But Magic wasn't happy either. Magic wasn't happy. No, LeBron isn't, isn't currently good. happy. A whole lot of unhappiness. Um, okay, let me let me get back to this real quick. The, the the Warriors Rockets. We're saying that you know could this be the end of a you know end of a historic run with that franchise? And really, freaking KD stole what the, what should have been the Cavs. You know, if if it wasn't for KD, I don't see anybody taking the Cavs down with our big three and our supporting cast. Um, but it is what it is. What do you think happens in this series? Now, it's not at a two. James Harden, Kevin Durant, 
who do you see pulling this out, and for for what reasons? What have you seen in the first four games? Um, I think you see the back and forth, but I think you've seen the Warrior. I think you've seen the Rockets uh, get incredibly lucky over the last two games. Oh. Um, so I think you've just seen them get incredibly lucky. I think the Warriors are a supremely talented team. Um, I think the Warriors are good. I mean, I think the Rockets are good. But um, I don't think they're I, I don't think they're near, nearly as good as the Warriors. Um, but I do see this being the last run of the Warriors. And, and where do you see? Do you see Durant in uh, New York? Is that where you're? Or with the Clippers? I don't know where I see him at this point. I can even see him going to the Clippers. Huh. Yeah. I, Imagine if he and Kawhi get together. Imagine if he and Kawhi get together and go to LA together. Who, That's a possibility. I'm not saying it's likely, but it could happen. Who? So, as far as the free agents, is there a possibility when when you say a team has room for uh, three max deals or something like that? Do you think people could rewrite the rules and come down and do like a decreased rate on a one year deal to get three of them in the same team? Like anything wacky happening? It would decrease rate over four years. Yeah, but don't forget they just won't own the bird rights. So just because you send a one year deal doesn't mean you can get it. It's like Demarcus Cousins can't just resign next year. At twenty something million for max money, and, and exceed the cap because they don't own his bird rights. So they'd have to trade for one of those stars in order to have their bird rights to do it. That's what complicates the situation. I like when the Cavaliers were able to do it because they traded for Kevin Love. Right. So they landed Kevin Love's bird rights. That's the difference in the situation, and they had Kyrie Irving's bird rights too. Do you th- do you think the bird rights are as important since since? Uh... Since Kyrie just kind of said, I'm taking my ball and going home, you know, he threatened the Cavs. No, the and bird said, rights are important. The bird rights are important for long-term sustainability and, and retaining your own free agent. Because, again, you can't just go and sign. You can't just put LeBron, um, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant on the deal for one-year contract and have them all re-sign at max money the next year. You can't do that mm-hmm. unless you have their bird rights. So it's impossible. It's literally impossible and it's not going to happen. So... So, you know, you just have to move on. Um, let me let me get to a couple of these questions real quick. I also want to get to the Portland series. You know, that that's kind of been interesting, too. Uh, a, a, lot, a lot of good series, but being a Cleveland-centric show, I just want to make sure we, we hit on these questions. Um, f- first off, just a point, Rob is saying, lucky, the Warriors have no bench this year. And they won game two and uh, by two and four points. Uh, Golden State struggles at home this year. So, you know, there's a little bit of pushback on... On the, on the Warriors, just that their team isn't as deep. And I think the DeMarcus Cousins injury obviously hurts there. Um, so if you had thoughts on that, that's fine. But one of the other questions is, J.R. Smith, what do you think we can do as a Cavaliers franchise with J.R.'s deal? What, what do you see that turning into? Um, I think the Cavaliers will either let it either expire. I tend to think they're going to trade him. Um, I think they're going to try to acquire guys a couple years left on his contract, either that isn't very good, that has two years left, that has an extra year left on his deal, and they'll try to acquire extra picks in the process. Or what they're going to do is they're going to try to trade and bring in a Gordon Hayward type player who might be able to have a rebound season in Cleveland. Especially, hypothetically, let's just say you get the number two or three overall pick. You get R.J. Barrett in that case to pair with Colin Sexton in your backcourt. You have Gordon Hayward, Kevin Love, and Tristan Thompson. That's a playoff team. I like you know, that. The Cavaliers do have options. It just depends what they want to do with these. You know, do you want to suck for another year, get another first-round pick? You know, it's just, it all depends what their strategy is moving forward. Okay, well, and, okay, moving forward, do you think, another question from Chad, do you think that they're going to look to move Tristan Thompson in the last year of his contract? Um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think they would at the trade deadline, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, another question coming in. Um, what about the, the draft pick that the, the Cavs have? Obviously, we have our, our you know, our, our number one pick. I'm just going to call it our number one pick and that we're going to take Zion Williamson. Um, but our second pick, our, our, our other first-round pick that we got from the Houston Rockets. No, number one, can you refresh us where that came from? And number two, do you think there's going to be some good talent down there for us to, to turn that into something valuable? Or who the heck knows? Look at Giannis. I mean... 
you never know. Giannis also wasn't the 26th overall pick in the draft. Fair. I think when you're looking at, I think when you're looking at the Rockets pick at 26, you're looking at a fringe roster player, you know, a fringe rotation player, I should say. Okay. And so then, I guess the value in the Cavs' second round picks would be just your throwing darts, trying to catch lightning in a bottle, and you know, if if, if number 26 is just a fringe rotation player. What kind of value are the number two picks? Because it seems like we made a lot of deals to kind of acquire pieces and parts, but it's not like you can package three number twos into a top ten pick or something. What do you think we do with our second yeah. round picks? What, what, what? If you're the cat, let me rephrase the question: If you're the Cavs and you have the second round picks, what? What's the game plan if cat if uh, if Zach Barris is GM? What do you do with those picks? You trying to package I'm the GM bundle? The Cavs. And I win in the top three. In order, I'm going. Whatever's best available, I think Zion won. I think John Moran or RJ Barrett, two. Depending on how I look to shape out my roster, I think it all depends on workouts from here on in. But depends. If you feel that Colin Sexton's best, it, here's the thing. It all depends on the Cavaliers like at Colin Sexton. If you feel Colin Sexton is the future point guard of this organization, you take RJ Barrett. If you think that Colin Sexton's better off as a two guard, then you take John Morant, you take the best available player. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think both of them are going to be all-stars. I think you're going to see John Morant have a quicker path to success than Barrett, just because I think he's a young Russell Westbrook type player. Um, and I think that Morant's going to be a very, very good NBA player. Um, but again, it's a small school mentality. It's like the Cavaliers, you know, back in 2012, was it, when they took waiters? No, uh, you know, we discussed this on the air many times, Brian. I told you. I said, listen, if you're going to take a risk, you take Andre Drummond or Damian Lillard if you're going to take a risk. And it wasn't because Lillard was a risky pick. It was because Lillard pairing him up with Kyrie Irving was risky. But he said the Cavaliers took Deion Waiters. You don't take a risk on a two-guard there. You would have been better off taking a risk on a point guard, pairing him in a backcourt. Imagine Kyrie and Lillard in a backcourt together. Oh, that would be something. Yeah, I, I, wow, wow. Yeah, Lillard's one of those players. It, it, well, okay, let, let's shift it for, back to Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers going up against the Nuggets. What do you make of this series? This is another close one. You know, Lillard is yeah, a very I intriguing player. It's going to matter because I think the winner of the next series, I think the winner of the Rockets Warriors is ultimately going to win the West. Okay. Um, but, you know, if I'm Milwaukee, I think Milwaukee is the one team that could beat Golden State. I don't think they're going to. Um, I still see Golden State winning a championship. I just, I think Kevin Durant's the best basketball player on the planet right now. And, you know, even with Steph Curry's struggles, that's what I'm saying. Curry's been so awful, yet Curry's been so awful, yet the Warriors are still barely losing. That's what I'm saying. Curry's at his worst, and they're still barely losing. That's all I'm saying right now. If you're the... um. If you're the Golden State Warriors right now, you have to feel good about playing this crappy and still going home 2-2. Two to two. You know, Curry's... I don't see Curry being in this long of a slump. Um, I just don't think it's possible. Is, so, is it a slump or is it is it a dislocated finger? You know, is it an injury? I see the dislocated finger. But they still have Kevin Durant. He's still the best basketball player on the planet right now. Houston has the second best in Harden. Well... Sorry, Milwaukee is the second best, and Giannis. And then Harden. I think it's equal, though, but I think they're both different. Okay. Yeah, maybe like 1A, 1B, or, you know, 1 yeah, and then 2A, 2B. It's hard to differentiate they don't B. play the same position. But, you know, all of them touch the ball, you know, enough. They all have high enough usage rates. You know, Brian, I want to get into a show where we discuss, um, you know, a little bit of advanced analytics. I've been doing some just models with it and having fun with it again. You know, I took a few years off from really pursuing it but you know I've been playing around with some numbers again and you know it's like why a guy like Anthony Davis although he might be the best player in the NBA contributes so little you know in the win column because in today's day and age the league doesn't revolve you know I'll get into this in another show but the league doesn't ultimately revolve around a big man anymore doesn't take the ball off the floor if you look at every team that that's consistently in the finals every year is because of a superstar point guard or a superstar point forward Let's take a look at the last four NBA Finals. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond, Kevin Durant for the Warriors. For the Cavaliers, LeBron and Kyrie. That's what you need to know. 
ten. That's all it tells you right there is how valuable the point guard position and the small forward point forward is to the, you know, to, to the game as well nowadays. The game doesn't revolve. You know, the Lakers going out and getting Demarcus Cousins is great, but it means so little. That's why Minnesota. You look at a player like Carl Anthony Towns. He's so good, and you wonder why the Timberwolves are so bad because the center position makes no difference anymore. That's stunning. I mean, I look. I, I grew up. I'm a, I'm a few years older than you. Not not by a ton, but I mean, my formative years were a lot of Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal. Patrick Ewing. I mean, you go down the list, David Robinson. It was center, 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 center. It was a, you know, obviously there was talent other than at the center position, but I mean, these were mega monoliths back there. The, the, these guys were just stone structures, all encompassing. Yeah. It, it, it was such a different game back in the day. You know, I, I just, it, it is yeah. different today. When you have Yan, you know, all these big guys shooting three-pointers. Um, but, by the way, what is your thought on, on, on Jokic's game? Because I'm, I'm watching him play, and he's he's pretty impressive. Are, are you liking him? Do you think he's overrated? I, I think Jokic is great. I, pretty impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm liking the kid. He's, he's got a, a high ceiling, I think. Um, he, he might... He, I just I sometimes you watch a player and you have a hunch that they're going to be around for a while and they're going to do big things, good things. I just have that hunch with him. Um, okay, well yeah, if you want if you want to do an so we're already planning once we get a chance to figure out where the ping pong balls lie, we'll give it a few days, maybe a week or something. We'll put together a good mock draft. We'll do a mock draft show. You're also putting in the in the pipeline that we're going to do an advanced analytics show, um, usage rate and all all of those types of things and. Not, not to put words in your mouth, but I'm basically hearing you say that you're predicting a Bucks warriors championship game with the Warriors winning as of right now? I, I mean, I, I'm still at the point like, listen, I really like Milwaukee. I like Toronto, too. I think it's a crapshoot that comes out of the East. And I think it's a crapshoot that wins the Warriors-Rockets series, but ultimately I think the Warriors prevail. And I don't see, I don't see the Nuggets or the Blazers beating the Warriors in a seven-game series. Although I would say it's more likely that Portland – could beat Golden State than, than it would be the other way around. I just don't think Denver has a scoring output as, as great as Jokic is. I don't think they have the scoring output to be able to do that. You know, when Lillard and McCollum go off, I think that I think it gives Portland a huge edge. But once again, I don't think I think Portland's one piece away. You throw Kevin Durant on Portland, Portland's going to be incredible. But they don't have Kevin Durant. They don't have LeBron James. You know, you put one of those guys on there. You know, if I'm Portland and I find out LeBron's for sale, I make a huge pitch to to, um, to the Lakers for LeBron. But once again, without giving up McCollum and giving up Miller, that's how I would make my pitch. But I just don't see it happening. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You know, uh, and, and, I, I, and to be honest with you, I don't think LeBron plays for any team besides the Lakers or the Cavs. So I think he can go to the Sam and say, like, listen, either trade me to Cleveland or I'm sitting out and I'm not playing. You know, you trade me another team and I'll tell any other team in the league, I'm not playing in Memphis. You know, I'm not playing in Toronto. I'm playing either in Cleveland, back in my home, I'm going to send my kids there, or I'm staying in L.A. It's one of the two. Well, you... Or trade me to the Clippers. Okay, so the Clippers or but... the Lakers or the Cavs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like the Lakers gave up anything to get LeBron. So... Like, obviously, trading LeBron for peanuts would be silly, but if you're in a situation where he's not happy and he's not wanting to stay, maybe you do just cut your losses and continue down a path and say, yeah, I, I don't know, it just it wasn't feeling right. We wanted it to work, but we dated a little bit and we decided to move on, go our, our mutual ways. Um, so, look, it's going to be interesting to follow. I, I, it's, it's a constant soap opera with LeBron. Um, by the way, um, Chad in the chat room is saying, I still think we need to tank next season, even if we land the number one pick. <laughs> I don't know I'm about not, that. I'm not disagreeing. No, I, I don't think, I don't think he's wrong. Like I said, it all depends what the Cavs feel they want to do. Do you want to sit there and make the playoffs or do you want to tank another year and really go in there and go hard and say, listen, let's go and try to get, you know, let's try and win 30 games or 20 games and, Let's try to get another top five pick, and let's pair Zion, Colin, and whoever, you know, 
you know, in top pick in next year's drafts all together. Let's, let's ultimately try to do that. So trying to do like the Seattle Supersonics thing with like Kevin Durant and uh, James Harden and then uh, Russell yep. Westbrook. Man, it's it's so weird. It's yep. like I, 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 I've almost completely blocked out the fact that they were drafted by Seattle. I was looking at rookie card. I got a rookie card the other day and I was looking. I'm going, wow. I just I, I, I don't recall ever seeing you in that jersey. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Well, but... Russell Westbrook never played for Seattle. They moved. So it was just Durant. That, yeah, because I got a picture of him drafted, with yeah, the jersey. He was drafted by Seattle, but they had moved to Oklahoma City right after the draft. So so he was never a Supersonic. Man. It, Although that would be a cool jersey to have. It would be a Westbrook Supersonic <laughs> jersey. I, you know what? I, what would be cool is if Seattle could get their franchise back. I think that would be That'd awesome. Be great. I don't, yeah. I mean, if you look at the league, it's worth more to have a team in Seattle than it is Oklahoma City much more valuable to have a team in a huge market, in a top 10 market, than it is to have a team in the 46th largest market. Okay, that's fair. And I know Oklahoma City is your favorite city, right? <laughs> Love OKC. Yeah, you Love do. Love the aroma. <laughs> so. All right. Um, okay, well, then, look, we're – okay, this is over. The Bucks have won. Yeah, I got to hop off tonight, Brian. Yeah. Um, but – Let's let's do a mock draft lottery show next week once the uh, once the lottery comes out. That sounds good. I, I I'll talk with you off air. I'm thinking maybe let's give it a week afterward. We'll get a, enough time to really prepare it, yep. and we'll put it together. Right, and, perfect. Yeah, that works for me. Zach Barris, I appreciate you. You can follow him on Twitter. He's at Z Barris Z B A R I S. Zach, I appreciate you as always. You have a great evening, sir. Thanks again, Brian. Take care, bud. All right, take care. Peace. There he goes, everybody. Zach Barris. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. We, we have a private sports group. It's on Facebook. As long as Facebook is going to allow me to have uh, an account. <laughs> they came out last week talking about dangerous content. I'm like, oh boy. Who have I had on? Now, I guess I haven't had Gavin and I haven't had... Uh, I interviewed Alex. I talked... No, I talked to Alex. Anyway, I digress. I just... The, the whole future of social media, it's weird. But anyway, we have a private group on Facebook. Follow us. It's called The Unhappy Hour Sports Show, a support group. Follow us. Join us. Participate. Subscribe. YouTube.com slash The New American Media. Check out all of our content. We've been doing this for a long time. New studio. New things are happening. I'm excited. New software. Trying a new OBS program since Broadwave. I won't bore you with the details, but the software we were using really wasn't doing it for us. We got some new lighting over here, but we probably still need some more lighting we're working on it big things ahead big things for Kyrie Irving is he gonna be a Nick is he going to the Clippers it's gonna be interesting huh. move the Kings well I don't know like Zach was saying the Kings might be good uh, Greg is saying we should ask Kyrie about that whole leading his own team thing is working out I'm gonna laugh at that comment because uh, karma's a funny thing man I really hate. I really hated how the Kyrie thing went down. I mean, I get getting annoyed with LeBron and his antics. Trust me, I get it. I've loved him and I've hated him. And then I resigned myself to whatever. Then I loved him again. We had a championship, and now I'm just it makes me sad. Watching him in yellow it just makes me sad. I'm not angry. He's not. He, I felt like he owed Cleveland. And, oh, he doesn't owe you any. No, no, no. Just, I know. I know. I'm not going to legislate or litigate that. But I did feel like LeBron owed us something. After he left for the Lakers, it's like, this stinks, man. Really? Okay. Okay. You know, in living in Los Angeles as long as I did, um, it's it's just weird. It's a, it's a different relationship. And having him come back to my new hometown and not caring and, and still feeling sad about it. Not angry, just sad. It's a weird feeling. It's a complex dynamic that I've had with LeBron James. But so be it. It is what it is. Um, I want to address a final question here. Chad saying, is Colin an all-star one day? I'm going to go with yes. He's a young player. He showed promise. He has potential. Oh, 
Doggone it, I didn't ask Zach about the coaching search. Urgh. That would have been a really... We got to Tyron Lue, but we didn't get to the Cavs. See, this is... Now, by the way, yes, th this whole show came up. Uh, okay, and I'll get to your XFL question. Okay, it's an ask me anything. Go. It's a lightning round. I'm not broadcasting on YouTube today. I'm, I'm only on Facebook. So if you have questions, put them in Facebook. What, what the heck was I talking about? Uh, Colin... Yeah, Colin Sexton, he... He's shown flashes, and toward the end of the year, he really seemed to start putting it together. He really seemed to settle into a style, settle into a tempo, a rhythm, uh, a familiarity, getting comfortable with the league. You know, give the kid a little bit of time. Not everybody comes in like gangbusters like LeBron. And even LeBron, he got better and better and better and better and better. That's to be expected, especially in the NBA. I think in every sport that's the case. Maybe in the NBA, it's more of the case. I don't know. Is Colin Sexton going to be an all-star one day? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to be wishful thinking that he's going to look fantastic playing against Z uh, next to Zion Williamson when we get the number one overall pick. Speak it into existence. We are the luckiest franchise in the history of the NBA. God bless Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Jason asking, am I excited for the new XFL? Yeah. Los Angeles is getting a team. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, more football is a good thing. You know, and, and, and more minor league. It's interesting because the minor leagues, what, why can't you have rival leagues or competitive leagues or minor leagues? In football, there's a lot. You know how many players make it to the NBA? I'm sorry, to, to the NFL? I don't have the stats in front of me. You make it through a draft, an entire NBA draft for an entire season, and maybe nobody on your team is selected. And these are all of the starters are like the best of the best. And only a tiny portion are getting a chance to play. I think there is talent out there. We saw it with the A, was it the AAF? I mean, I always confuse it with the AAF and the AAU. Um, I know the Browns signed Garrett Gilbert, who has the 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 AAU. AAF. Doggone it! Now I gotta look. Let's see, AAF. Yeah, it is AAF, and Garrett Gilbert has the record. There we go. Strange tales from the collapse of the AAF. But yeah, I, I think you can get some good competitive football. I think you can get some good stuff going on. So, yeah, I'm excited for the new XFL. Try some new stuff. Try some new new rules, new techniques, new strategies, new quirks. and Yeah, I'm really excited. I hope it's not too campy, not too WWE. I, I don't know if I would vibe on that as much. But I, more football is a good thing in my book. So I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you again very soon. I appreciate you. I love you. Take care. Peace.